Hello, I'm Atu Jameer and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now news in details. Australian cricket legend Shane Warren has passed away at the age of 52. He is suspected to have died due to a heart attack. Reports stated that Warren was in Thailand when the doctors unsuccessfully tried to revive him. Shane was found unresponsive in his villa and despite the best efforts of his medical staff, he could not be revived, a statement read. Shane Warren was born on September 30, 1969 in Ferntree, Gully, Victoria, Australia. He is known to be the most effective bowler in the history of cricket. In 2006, he became the first bowler to take 700 test wickets. In a breaking news, the General Secretary of the NSC and IMTH Moeva was airlifted from Hebron by chopper and taken to Dimapu Airport due to health issues on Friday. Security personnel and an ambulance awaited the General Secretary at the airport who arrived around 4.30 p.m. The leader of the factional group was taken to the CIHSR after. This is the second time in less than a year that Muiva has been rushed to the hospital due to health issues. More details are awaited. At least 56 people were killed and more than 60 others injured after a bomb ripped through a crowded Shia mosque during Friday congregation in the northwestern Pakistani city, officials said. A rescue official said that the blast occurred at Jamia Mosque in Kisa, Kwani Bazaar area and Bishwara when the worshippers were offering Friday prayers. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the blast. Asim Khan, media manager of Lady Reading, said 30 bodies have being brought to the hospital so far, according to Don. Officials said the condition of 10 injured is stated to be critical. Capital City Police Officer Peshwar Ayaz Asan said two attackers tried to enter the mosque and fired at the policeman standing guard. One policeman was killed while the other was critically injured, he said. The blast occurred following the firing accident incident, he added. You know, Minister of Ports, Shipping and Waterways in Ayush, Sarbananda Sonwal today while integrating the integrated Ayush Hospital at Raza Chetima in Kohima announced a major investment of more than rupees 100 crore to develop the Ayush healthcare sector in the state of Nagaland. He also announced that a 30-bed Ayush hospital and three 10-bed hospital along with one Ayurvedic college will be developed in the state with the allocated fund. A 30-bed Ayush hospital will be developed at Kifire, while 10-bed Ayush hospital will be developed one each at Mokokchung at Nagaland University in Dimapur and Woka. Sonowal said. Further, in order to give higher education in Ayush a Philip in the region, the Union Minister announced setting up of a state-of-the-art Ayurvedic college at Long Leng too. The cost of this college is estimated at rupees 70 crore. The Union Minister also said that Northeast has an immense potential to become the hub in the Ayur sector and that Nagaland is no exception with a lot of potential to be tapped. He said that the Ministry of Ayush has been making a sincere attempt to unlock the huge value that the rich biodiverse region of Northeast possesses. Sonowal also virtually led the foundation stone of integrated Ayush hospital at Tuli, Metsipima and Kifiri. Also speaking on the occasion, Nagaland's Health and Family Welfare Minister as Pang Yupom said that with the inauguration of integrated Ayush hospital, the state will have three fully functional Ayush hospitals and two hospitals are in pipeline which is under construction. In addition, five Ayush dispensaries are functioning as Ayush Health and Wellness Center, flourishing and meeting the needs of the people on a daily basis, also regenerating and discovering new medicinal plants, which is helping the locals, rural people to preserve, cultivate and produce more of such plants, enabling them to earn their livelihood, also benefiting health system in many aspects. He said the cost of IAH Raza project was rupees 9.17 crore, which was sanctioned in the year 2018, measuring 3.50 acres with pleasant and friendly environment. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and also IUS, the government of Nagaland, to develop. 50 bedded integrated Ayush hospital at Sedema, Kohima. 
and this particular integrated hospital will have the facility of uh, homeopathy treatment, Ayurveda treatment, yoga, and panchakarma, etc., etc. And I think this facility will be available by the people of Nagaland. And at the same time, I have made certain announcement today. And three more ten-bedded hospital, thirty-bedded one more thirty-bedded hospital, and one Ayus College will be set up in the near future, provided if the government of Nagaland submit the proposal at the right time, and as per the existing rules, whatever. Procedure need to be followed strictly. I think this should be strictly followed by the government of Nagaland. Like uh, central ministers to pay visit to the northern state in every fortnight and also to implement the scheme from their respective ministries within a time frame. So this is the love and affection. This is the respect. This is the like uh, in keen interest he has for the cause of the people of northeast. And because of his support and sympathy, in the last seven years, Northeast could able to have the lot of changes, lot of transformation in all the sectors, whether in the education sector, health sector, infrastructure, connectivity, communication, industry, innovation, startup, and also science, technology, sports, youth affairs, and tourism in all the sector, agriculture. Because of Honorable Prime Minister's support, this is happening. And he has set a very uh, clear target for the people of the country that this particular nation will have to become self-reliant nation with the support of the people of the country. That is why I appeal to the people of Nagaland. So please make Nagaland, Atmanivar Nagaland, self-reliant Nagaland to make India Atmanivar Bharat. Uh, national waterways are being declared. Those sector will also be taken up. And uh, some of the proposals already submitted by the state government, those rivers will also have the techno feasibility, uh, uh, economic, techno economic feasibility survey within a short span of time. Uh, my ministry is committed to this. Particularly, as you know, Honorable Prime Minister is always taking keen interest for the promotion of inland waterways and also coastal waterways. And also he wants that inland waterways should have better integration with the coastal waterways so that our cargo vessel and passenger vessel can move comfortably faster for our economic development. To the Union Minister of Ayush and Ports, Shipping and Airways, Minister Sharbananda Sonowal inaugurated integrated Ayush Hospital at Raja Chadema Kohima. In the presence of Nagaland Health and Family Welfare Minister S. Pangipom, Sonowal said that the Ayush Hospital will bring benefit to the people in the area of health and wellness and overall. He called upon the people to work for self-reliant Nagaland, progressive Nagaland, while welcoming the new era of Ayush in Nagaland. Signing off now, I'm Yan Bini with video. Chief Minister Nipiru today officially inaugurated Shamator as the 16th district of Nagaland. Addressing the gathering, the Chief Minister expressed happiness at the Yim Kyung and Tikir coming together as one. CM suggested that the name of Shamator district be labeled as the Brotherhood District. You expressed hope that Shamator will be one of the most developed and progressive districts of Nagaland with the inhabitants living in harmony. He assured that the government will bring necessary development and that visible transformation will be seen before the general election. World Engineering Day for Sustainable Development under the theme Build Back Wiser, Engineering the Future was held today at Jafu Hotel in Kohima with Munlo Mokikon, Advisor for IT and Communication, Science and Technology as the special guest. The program was organized by the Federation of Nagaland State Engineering Service Association. Speaking on the occasion, Kikon said that engineers are the backbone and foundation 
of the development in the state. He said, when it comes to the collaboration between policy makers and the backbone of development policies, it is important to join hands and work collectively for the future of the state. To dream a better Nagalin, he opined that there should be a proportionate representation on the basis of developmental data. Otherwise, it will always remain a tribalistic society that will hamper development in the state. When there is a developmental equity in the state, only then we will have a better Nagaland, he added. There was something which was missing, which I sort of um, thought about many a times. The most important thing about development in the state, if you review since 1963 till date, is the fact that there has been attempts by many brilliant minds to ensure that development is equitable in the state. However, data on the ground says it is not so. We are driven by the politics of tribalism. We are driven by the politics of self-interest. Sometimes we see Greek emerging out of the minds of some of our leaders who have been in politics in the past. And it is not generalization. Of course, this is not specific to the state of Nagaland alone. But then, the uncomfortable truth, the elephant in the room, has to be addressed. And unless we do that first, there is no future for us. So therefore, I have repeatedly and in many forums shared this concern. President of FONSESA, Engineer Hutoi Sema, said that the celebration of World Engineering Day is also about promoting engineering as a career and how it is an opportunity to change the world for better to ensure that everyone has access to clean water, sanitation, renewable energy and other basic human needs. and in 2021, Nagaland was declared drought. And this year, Nagaland faced extreme drop in temperature, bringing snowfalls in some areas uh, after a gap of 37 years. Today, the climate forecast, the climate forecast, as per the climate forecasters, Nagaland is to experience 1.8 degrees Celsius increase in temperature by 2050. Increased temperature leads to change in weather pattern which directly and indirectly affects our habit, our agriculture, agriculture sector and power sector, which has already happened in 2013 when, power rain, when poor rainfall in some areas as Russia continues to pound Ukraine moving ahead to establish its control over the Eastern European country, President Volodymyr Zelensky has survived at least three assassination attempts, a report said. According to the Times, the assassination attempts were foiled after anti-war Russian intelligence informed Ukrainian authorities about the kill plan by two separate mercenary groups. The mercenaries are said to be linked to Kremlin-backed Wagner Group and Chechen Special Forces to report further added that the assassin team sustained losses during their operation and were amazed by how Ukrainian forces were well informed about the moves and thwarted them accurately. Zelensky's security team was apparently well briefed about the assassination attempt that helped them to be ready with a counter plan. Earlier reports had emerged that as many as 400 Russian mercenaries have been flown in from Africa to target President Zelensky and his entire cabinet. Amid worsening fight between Russia and Ukraine, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday urged world leaders to stop Russia before this becomes a nuclear disaster. In Facebook video post, Zelensky said that no country besides Russia has ever fired upon an atomic power plant's reactor and it is the first time in history. Zelensky urged European leaders to wake up now and stop Russian forces before this becomes a nuclear disaster. Zelensky accused Russia of intentionally firing at the Zepori ZZ nuclear power plant after a fire broke out at the facility following heavy shelling from Russian forces. Zelensky also referred to the Chernobyl targets 
tragedy and its victims in the post. Meanwhile, Ukrainian authorities said that the fighting has stopped in the area and about 40 firefighters are working to put out the blaze. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a high-level meeting on the Russia-Ukraine crisis and revived the, reviewed the progress of Operation Ganga. The meeting comes amid reports of an Indian student being shot at Kiev and hospitalized. Union Minister General V.K. Singh on Friday said he had received reports that a student who has been shot at has been hospitalized. Since an all-out war broke out between Russia and Ukraine, PM Modi has been holding a series of high-level meetings. PM Modi has spoken to Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky as well. Under the leadership of PM Modi, Operation Ganga has been launched with four union ministers deputed to four neighboring countries of Ukraine to oversee every aspect of the evacuation. Three more Indian Air Forces C-17 aircraft returned to Indian Air Base late last night and early on Friday morning carrying 630 Indian nationals from Ukraine using airfields in Romania and Hungary under Operation Ganga. According to the External Affairs Ministry, over 9,000 citizens have been brought back to India from Ukraine so far. In solidarity with the Oting incident, the OUT Students Conference, AKM, visited Mon District and met the Oting Village Council members. The team also paid homage to the late brothers, the fallen victims of December 4, 2021. During an interaction, the AKM said that innocent blood soaked in the land is still fresh and affirmed that it, is, it will raise its voice until justice is delivered. AKM said it will always continue to stand with the Konyak brothers and Naga as a whole in every issue. Stating that AKM is always vocal against the enforcement of AFSPA, it reiterated that the union will stand against the removal of AFSPA from Nagaland. The AKM also urged all Naga people to come forward for a common front to pressure the government of India to remove AFSPA from our land. The union also had a meeting with Konyak Students Union. We are overwhelmed you know, like uh, seeing the entire Nagas and then especially our, our brothers in particular <coughs> coming together to fight against the atrocity inflation done upon our brothers. So we are very much thankful to all of you for sacrificing and like for your physical presence. And indeed, we feel more, you know, like uh, blessed and then you know, it has pushed our moral also. Current issue, which is an issue that uh, which show all the world. Uh, when we come here, we feel like our home. Even today, noting uh, one of my uncle was speaking in our own outside lake. So whenever we go to eastern side, we feel us as a home. Christianity and integration. That's it. Mm. That's the reason where we all have the bondage. And then that makes us as a brother. As a young leaders, we all have to remind our brothers and sisters that we are one and then we will be one together in all our works of life. In a glittering attestation period held at the Assam Rifles Training Center and School Shukovi on Friday, over 1,900 recruits were inducted into the force. A few days earlier, hundreds of new rifle women recruits graduated in the passing out parade at the Assam Rifles Center and School at Shukovi. This event was the special attestation period to mark the completion of 44 weeks of grueling training in the battlecraft, weapon handling, jungle lane shooting and other specialization in counterinsurgency operations. Today, the attestation period was reviewed by the Director General of SM Rifle. Let's have a look at a detailed report with a reporter, Sumo.
this is my 40th year of seeing passing out parades uh, from my National Defence Academy days and I have no inhibitions in admitting that this is one of the most spectacular and one of the most synchronised passing out parades that I have ever seen. Uh, such large numbers, whether in terms of the Mahila or the lady recruits who passed out two days back or this large number which passed out today, which is of almost 2,000 in numbers, is one of the largest ever uh, that has passed out from anywhere. And the full credit goes to the Central Commandant here, Brigadier Suresh Sharon, and his team of officers, men, uh, who've toiled day and night to make this happen. Age 68 in the female, uh, 1900, plus. 1900 plus, and some have passed out a little earlier, so about 2000. We have made a change starting from this batch. All of them go for 30 days vacation, deservedly so, I feel. After this hard toil, they have to get back to their families, and after 30 days, they join their respective village. Both Kushi or Ye, uh, when I saw them, I came both to see her. Upne Apko, Kesa Samala, Desku Samala, self development, Upne Apme, then Nisha, Kesa Karna, her Musipa, Kesa Samna Karna, both are Muskili, is training a beach man, Hamarasa, this home, Amne or Hamare Ustaton, both Balivati. फेस किया जिनमें मेरे पेरेंट्स का बहुत सपोर्ट रहा है कि ये सब तो बहुत ही अच्छी बात है कि देश के सेवा करने के लिए हमारे बच्चा जो है यहां पे आए हैं और देश के सेवा करेगा इससे हम लोग के बहुत खुशी है कि अपना देश के लिए सब कुछ के करना चाहिए फर्स्टली व्हेन आई कम हियर आई अंडरस्टूड दैट द मेनी पीपल से दैट सोल्जर्स जॉब इज नॉट वेल बिकॉज़ दे हैव ट्रेंड्स सो हाई एंड एक्चुअली व्हेन आई हैव कम देयर Firstly, we have got some problems. After a few days, when I have to committed uh, on the cultures of there, I feel no any relaxation. That period, sometimes I feel first job is not well. But after a few days, when I have fully attempted and fully trained here, feel that soldier is the best job. And during some problem, uh, during training, I got faced some problem. But after a few times, I also got so relaxation and happiness. Yeah. So, was it your first, uh, like dream from childhood to join army, or is it like you uh, inspiration? You got inspiration and then you joined. I want to become cricketer. Do you know? But due to some situations, uh, when I saw the soldiers, uh, I also got inspired and I want to do something for the country. That time, I tried to the force and already uh, I have passed out in the SSC job. असम राइफल जी बहुत बढ़िया है ट्रेनिंग सेंटर है यहां पर जितने भी रिक्रूट आए हैं अच्छे से ट्रेनिंग किए हैं हां मेरा बचपन से ड्रीम था आर्मी ज्वाइन करने का मैंने बहुत मेहनत किया आर्मी के लिए तो एसएससी का मैंने फॉर्म भरा तो एसएससी में मेरा मुझे सपना पूरा हुआ जाकर के the lawyer of RJD chief Lalu Prasad Yadav in for the scam case, Prabhat Kumar on March 4 informed that he has filed an appeal in court. Lalu Prasad Yadav has challenged a special CBI court judgment in Jharkhan High Court. They have filed an appeal in court today and they have removed all defects by the office report was not included and due to that, the court listed the matter for next Friday, he said. आज हम लोग ने अपील फाइल किए थे और उसमें पांच तो डिफेक्ट लगाया गया था तो सभी डिफेक्ट को हम लोग ने रिमूव कर दिए था पर ऑफिस का रिपोर्ट उसमें नहीं लग पाया था इसके कारण जो है आज सुनवाई जो है ऑफिस का रिपोर्ट मांगे हैं ऑनरेबल कोर्ट ने और अगले फ्राइडे को फिर इसकी सुनवाई होगी तो एलसीआर वगैरह मंगवा लिया कोर्ट ने नहीं वो तो जब डिफेक्ट रिमूव डिफेक्ट सब रिमूव हो जाएगा तब कोर्ट का आदेश होगा लोकर लोअर कोर्ट रिकॉर्ड मंगाने का मैं था जो जजमेंट की कॉपी हम लोग को लोअर कोर्ट से जो मिली थी तो उसमें करीब करीब 70 80 पन्ने जो थे जो कि साफ नहीं प्रिंट हुआ था सा, साफ नहीं प्रिंट हुआ था तो उसका टाइप कॉपी मांगा गया था और हम लोग वो अशोक पे, पेज का जो है टाइप कॉपी दैट्स ऑल वी हैव फॉर नाउ कीप वाचिंग ऑन बिल टीवी